Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ of the Lakeshore family. As I come at you on this new week uh, that we're in, following Sunday, October 27th. And I want to encourage you in your daily walk with Jesus. I want to encourage you to remember each and every single day, no matter what you face, that your Creator God, your Heavenly Father, dearly loves you and that He embraces you as His son and daughter through Christ Jesus. And you see what Jesus did at the cross, as we talked about on Sunday, it was not about Jesus placating, satisfying, turning away, propitiating the wrath of an angry God and Father, as if the Father needed an attitude adjustment so that then he could have mercy on us. You know, that view of the cross, which is really popular in the Western church at, since the time of Luther, um, even among Lutherans, but in its very crass form like that, when it pops up, it can be very toxic. It can make you wonder at times, well, is God going to love me? Is he going to be angry with me? And it's like, no. When Jesus died on the cross, his whole work, his person and work, his incarnation, his obedient life, his, his servant life, his suffering, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, it was all about the love of God, your Father, reaching down through his Son in the flesh, submerging himself into the darkness of this world and taking on our sin, facing the powers of darkness and facing death head on as our enemies, sin, death, and the powers of the devil so that by his death, he overcame and destroyed death. And with his resurrection from the dead, he won the victory. His resurrection was the beginning of a new creation, of a new humanity for us. And he raised us up in his ascension to the Father's right hand with him so that we in Christ are adopted. We are raised up into the heavenly places, into that circle of love within the triune God in Christ. That is what the cross is all about. The love of the Father who comes to us to love us. You know, the image that I used, I'm going to kind of tweak it a little bit. It's like a, a little kid that falls down and gets dirty and is in the mud. and has got mud and dirt all over him. And yet dad comes and he reaches down and he picks up his son. He picks up his daughter out of the mud, cleans him off. He, he takes that dirt away, washes the dirt away, and then takes his son, his daughter, lifts him up as he sits down, lifts him up into his lap to embrace him, to embrace her, and read to his child, the one he loves, to read a story. That is what God has done in Jesus. How beautiful is that? And so this week, just, just receive the embrace of your Heavenly Father. And, and just think of that image. He's lifted you up into his lap in Jesus to be loved by him. As the Apostle Peter in his first letter says, He, that is Jesus, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. You see what he's done? He bore our sins and he's the one who heals us. That's the heart of the Father. 
He's our healer spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Yeah, I, I know. And sometimes it's like, man, I'd like an advance on that resurrection body, like right now. I really could use that for the back pain I've got. Or, it's, but we know he's our healer, full healing. Now the physical will come with the resurrection of the body, but today he heals us with the love of our Abba Father, and that because of his death and resurrection, we die to sin. That every single day we die to sin. We know that it's gone. That self-centeredness, that guilt, that fear, and all the, the, the junk that the world would throw at us, uh, false hopes and lies to, to find true happiness and satisfaction. All of that we're, is dead and gone in Christ. And we have a new life. He says to live for righteousness to live in the right way that God designed us to live, the right way that he commands us to live, the right way that is according to his truth, which is how? To love him and to love one another, to live lives of humility, gentleness, kindness, peace, to live with the joy of the Lord, to live with trust in him, just rest in the embrace of your Father and His love for you in Jesus. Let Him pick you up and put you in His lap. That's what it's all about. You know, we were talking about this last night in the community group that meets at our house. We're talking about how it's not about an angry God that Jesus has to give him an attitude adjustment, but it is about the love of the Father overcoming, yes, the consequences of sin and judgment and the devil and death, but in order to heal us with his love, to rescue us, to deliver us. And uh, talking about that, because, you know, the importance of discussing the truth of Scripture and the theology, the teachings of God's Word is so important for us as God's people to grow us deeper in our faith. And you know, I had a discussion kind of like this also after the worship service yesterday. There was a, a young couple that were, they were visitors to our worship service. The, the wife was one of the sponsors at the baptism. Her name was Ann, and her husband's name was Micah. And uh, after the service, I was talking with Micah. He came up to me and said, oh, pastor, that was, what a great worship service, and Love the message. He said, man, you really made me think. And it just was, it was just was really clear. And he started to engage me in a conversation about the, the truth of scripture. And, and he, was, he was basically talking theology with me. Oh my goodness. It just got me all excited. All my, I just lit up and was fired up. And it was like, whoa, this guy who's probably 20s, it, is talking theology. I mean, he wants to engage deeper in the scriptures and the truth of it and the theology of God's word. And then all of a sudden his wife came up. She started engaging the conversation too. I mean, here's husband and wife talking theology with me. I'm like, oh my goodness, it doesn't get any better than this. And I thought, you know, what's your background? I mean, so they're Roman Catholic. They go to a Catholic church and they love the scriptures, Jesus is at the center. And it was a great reminder that whatever the label, Catholic, Methodist, Baptist, Lutheran, Pentecostal, that, that whatever Christian label, there's more that unites us than divides us. And that for them, Jesus was at the center. It was all about them. And what a wonderful conversation. And uh, they... They were like, oh yeah, we, we love to read the early church fathers and works of theology. And they were both talking about books they've read. And they said, oh yeah, we just got done reading C.S. Lewis's The Great Divorce. And, and I thought, oh my goodness, may their tribe increase to have more young people, more of God's people reading not only the scriptures, but engaging in the reflections of others about the scriptures, works of theology. And so I asked some more. I said, so, you know, what, what's your background? I mean, if, 
I've gone to school. I mean, seminary. You know, I think, has this person gone to seminary? He could have gone to seminary or Bible college. He's like, no, I'm in construction. I own a construction business. And in my free time, I like to, not only does he like to read the scriptures, but he says, I like to read books of theology. I was just floored. I just also excited. I'm like, this is great. Would that all God's people at one level or another engage the faith with a greater intensity like that. So, so here's my second challenge for you this week. Not only to remember and live in the reality that your father embraces you in his love, but also the, you would be reading the scriptures, but also seeking to go deeper in the faith and read the reflections of others. And I'm, yeah, there's there's a place for kind of your standard fair books of uh, Christian living. Not to knock those. Devotional books are good. Prayer books are good. But you know what? Once in a while, you need to read a deeper work. And, and it could be C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity or On Miracles or Screw Tape Letters about spiritual warfare. Uh, it could be a book by Philip Yancey about what's so amazing about grace. It could be one of the early church fathers. It could be um, Athanasius on the Incarnation. It could be a work by Martin Luther, Two Kinds of Righteousness or the Freedom of the Christian. Works like that. Or it could be a theme or a topic like the cross, which we talked about on Sunday morning. If you want to go deeper, it's like, okay, pastor is talking about how do we understand what Jesus did at the cross? Well, you know what? You could go deeper. And I've got a couple suggestions for you. First of all, my first recommendation, and this is a book that anyone could read, I really believe. It, I mean, it's a short 70-page book titled Jesus and the Undoing of Adam by Baxter Kruger. Boy, if I could have everyone at Lakeshore read this book, this would definitely be a spiritual detox. I think what I talked about yesterday would sink in a little bit deeper. And uh, so, yeah, I want to encourage you, if, if you're inclined to read a little bit more on the cross and what that means, oh, man, this is a gem. Highly recommend Jesus and the Undoing of Adam by Baxter Kruger. I'm going to read a little excerpt in a little bit, but not done with my recommendation. So this would be the place I'd start, and everyone could read it, written on an easy-to-read level. If you want to go a little bit deeper, the next book is called Healing the Gospel, A Radical Vision for Grace, Justice, and the Cross by Derek Flood. Still fairly easy to read on more of a popular level, a little more challenging than Baxter Kruger's work, but you don't have to have a seminary degree. Yeah, and, and, th and that's, talking to this couple, it's like, you don't have to have been to seminary or Bible college to, to engage the faith deeper. Sometimes people are like, well, you know, I'm just, I'm not a theologian and I haven't been to seminary. I'll leave that to the, and it's like, no, this is for all God's people to engage deeper in the faith. And uh, so here, here's kind of a, you know, more advanced beginner, almost intermediate book that you really could tackle. Um, so Healing the Gospel, how's that for a provocative title? Uh, healing the Gospel, taking out all the toxic elements from it. Okay, now if you're like, okay, pastor, I really want to go deep. If you're an eager beaver and you're like, lay it on thick, okay, I've got the book for you. How about 600 pages? Uh, this book, for anyone who is like, man, I, I want to dive into the deep end. The Crucifixion, Understanding the Death of Christ by Fleming Rutledge. How's that, baby? Thanks, big. Uh, I read this about three years ago, and it was the winner of the 2016 Christianity Today Book Award for Beautiful Orthodoxy. And it tackled 
the subject I talked about Sunday, penal substitution versus seeing the cross as Christus victor, Christ as the victor who won a victory, the Father through the Son, rather than pitting the Father against the Son. Oh man, you want to go deep? Get this baby. This thing's, this thing's beautiful cover. Love that. But um, I got a whole bookshelf full of books just on the cross. But here's a few of my top recommendations. But once again, if you want to enter in, I want to recommend this book again, Jesus and the Undoing of Adam. And, you know, that's one thing I came away from this discussion. It's like, boy, you don't have to have been to seminary or Bible college. It doesn't matter what your job is, who you are. You can engage the scriptures and the faith, whoever you are. And, you know, maybe it's just once in a while. That's okay. And, you know, maybe you're not a reader. That's okay, too. You can always get books, uh, audio books. So I want to read one selection from this. Um... And I want you to listen to just the beauty of this. He writes, Baxter Kruger writes and says, The paradox at the heart of Christianity is that the Son of God entered into fallen Adamic existence, the existence of Adam, without ceasing to be the Son of God. He became Adam without ceasing to be the faithful Son of the Father. The life of the Trinity intersected the brokenness of fallen human existence. How is this possible? How could the fellowship of the Trinity penetrate Adam's hiding? How could the togetherness and integrity of the Father, Son, and Spirit enter the brokenness and perversion of fallen Adamic existence? How could the one who knows the Father and loves him with all his heart enter into the wrongheadedness and blindness and projections of Adam and of Israel? How could this contradiction be possible? The answer is that it is not possible. Something has to give. Something has to change. Either the fellowship of the Father, Son, and Spirit grinds to an eternal halt, or the existence of Adam and sinful flesh is fundamentally reordered. Either the love of the triune God is broken, or Adamic flesh is converted to God. There has to be a conversion, a fundamental restructuring, either in the being and character of God, or in the being and character of Adam. The entrance of the fellowship of the Father, Son, and Spirit into our alienation and estrangement did not mean the ruin of the Trinity, it meant war. As Luke tells us, Jesus Christ beat his way forward by blows. The Son of God entered our broken, fallen, alienated human existence. He took upon himself our fallen flesh. He stood in Adam's shoes, in Israel's shoes, in our shoes, and he steadfastly refused to be like Adam. He refused to be like Israel. He entered into fallen human existence and steadfastly refused to be fallen in it. Step by step, blow by blow, moment by moment, he refused to believe in the God of Adam and he loved his father with all of his heart, soul, mind, and strength. Step by step, blow by blow, moment by moment, he hammered out his sonship on the anvil of fallen Adamic existence. Step by step, blow by blow, Blow moment by moment, he bent back the thoroughgoing wrongheadedness of the mind of Adam. It took 33 years of fire and trial, of temptation with loud crying and tears, and what we see in Gethsemane the gut wrench of it all, the pain and overwhelming weight, the struggle, the passion, the agony is a window into the whole life of Jesus Christ. To relegate the sufferings of Jesus Christ. The agony that he bore to a few infinite moments on the cross is to miss the point entirely. His whole life was a harrowing ordeal of struggle, of suffering, of trial, and tribulation, and pain, for he lived out his sonship inside nothing less than fallen man's existence. His whole life was a perpetual cross and resurrection. And the death of Jesus Christ was not punishment from the hands of an angry God. It was the son's ultimate identification with fallen Adam. 
and the supreme expression of faithfulness to his own identity as the one who lives in fellowship with the Father and the Spirit. For he truly entered into our brokenness and estrangement and alienation. He bore the intolerable contradiction in his own being, and he resolved it through fire and trial by dying to his Adamic flesh, by crucifying it on Calvary. For in no other way could he live out his fellowship with his Father as the incarnate Son in the teeth of the fall, except through the radical circumcision of his Adamic flesh and the complete undoing of the mind of Adam. Oh, I could read on, but I think I better bring that to a close just to give you a teaser. Um, Got to get this book. Outstanding. Um, it truly is God reaching down, taking a hold of us in Jesus, cleaning us off and lifting us up into his lap. I'm going to leave you with a final plug, shameless plug for my upcoming class on the book of Revelation. Monday, November 11th, book of Revelation. If you want to, I know it's a scary book, but if you want to wrestle with the scriptures, I want to encourage you uh, to sign up for this class, 6.30 to 8 o'clock, starting the 11th. Hope to see you there. Please sign up, let me know. And um, with that, the Lord be with you, go with you, and know how much he loves you and embraces you in Jesus. God's peace. Talk to you next time.